Okay, question from Twitter from uh, Violet. Hi, Ian. Doesn't supply affect price? Coins with billions of supply can only go so high, right? Uh, good question. Good question. Uh, yes, supply. You have to factor in supply, but it's not really the number of tokens per se. Because uh, let me bring up my screen again. So, for example, if we go to SushiSwap, the supply here is 250 million is the max supply. Currently, there are 196 million and only 127 million are circulating, meaning that they're liquid on exchanges and can be transferred and all that. Uh, but in general, what you have to look at is the market cap and the inflation of the supply. How often are new coins being minted? So, for example, Ethereum has no max supply, but that's not really an issue because it's, a, it's what we call reducing inflationary. The supply is reducing, and it's basically an asymptote line, I believe is what it's called. And it's, uh, it's decreasing and getting closer to zero, but never quite hits zero, right? So if you see here, it has infinity. But you're saying, why isn't that an issue? Yeah, so basically... This is what, what we're looking at, right? So the supply schedule for Ethereum began high early on, but decreases and approaches zero, but never quite hits zero. So eventually it'll end up being like 0 0.000000, not, not quite zero, right? So that's why it's not really an issue because eventually it won't it'll be close to zero, right? So going back to your question in terms of why it's not an issue, so projects like, like EOS, EOS, right? You basically have three supply schedules. You have uh, inflationary, where the supply is just increasing. Then you have deflationary, where it's decreasing and eventually hits zero, like Bitcoin. Bitcoin has 20 capped uh, Bitcoin. What supply every halving halves in half until it, until it hits zero. So basically it will be very, very, very scarce. Uh, Ethereum is doing the same thing, except it never hits zero. It will just kind of get close to zero, keep on halving until it becomes almost negligible, right? But basically, it gets close to zero, but never quite hits zero because you want to, or rather, Ethereum wants to be able to, to create more Ether, right, and have that control. But they want to make sure it's not affecting the, the supply long term, right? So that's why it basically reduces. Uh, and then you have fixed supply schedule like EOS. EOS has, I believe, 4.5%. So every single year, annually, it's the same percentage. Now, I think that's the worst because those projects are just keep on printing tokens at the same level forever, right? And I think that that's probably why EOS may, may not be doing too well. But reducing inflationary, I think, makes more sense. Most of the projects in DeFi kind of have that same approach. They launch early on with no tokens in, sub in, sub in circulation, and they're just printing money or printing tokens through APY and yield farming and other incentives. But eventually, it stabilizes and then decreases gradually. So I think that's what... Uh, so I think that's why it's not really a factor. But I mean, that's something that remains to be seen long term. Uh, some, pro some sites do factor in the fully diluted market cap. But right now, I don't think it's really something that's used by retail investors or traders much. So to me, it's not really big of a factor. So I uh, hope, uh, hope that helps. Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com.